Okay, we're on our 2008 Enterprise server. We need to do some post installation tasks after we've installed Active Directory and run DC Promo. The first thing we want to do is configure a DNS forwarding or a forwarding zone on our DNS server. And the reason is, let's look at the IP con uh, configuration settings real quick on our server. Remember we again change it to a static IP. We need to do that for our domain control. We don't want it to be a, a dynamic IP. But let's look at our settings. So in this case, we have as an alternate DNS 1 and 2 wants to say 82 and that's where we want to forward DNS queries to. That's our router. And we we'll, we'll want to remember this too, the default gateway setting, because that's what we'll need to configure the scope information for when we set up our DHCP server. So we'll just kind of leave that command prompt open. We'll minimize it in the background. Let's open up DNS. And I'm going to go to Sarah, right click. I'm going to go to properties and under forwarders. And in this case, this would not have been here. So let me go ahead and delete that. And what we would have seen would you know, basically be this. So I'd want to add that zone, 192.168.82. Uh, I want to add that router address and DNS server. And all this does, you know, if any of the hosts on our local network try to resolve a host into an IP and our DNS server, our domain controller, DNS server, global catalog server here, um, cannot resolve that host name to the IP, then it's going to send the request over to 192.168.82. There's a couple other options worth mentioning here. Um, root hints, uh, again, I could specify if I want that, you know, you use root hints if no forwarders are available. Well, these are like top level DNS servers on the internet. They don't change very frequently, but you do have the option of adding new ones. Um, you can edit them and you can remove them and you can also copy them from a server. Under advanced mode, few nice features here, disable recursion. Remember we talked about um, iterative versus recursive queries, but that would help enable you know greater performance on your DNS servers if they were getting bogged down. Enable round robin has been enabled. Um, again, that would be if you're using clustering, such as in a web farm, you could have uh, you know multiple IP addresses mapped to the same host name, and round robin would just go around and around and around in round robin fashion to sort of balance the load between those multiple uh, you know, host names or servers with multiple IP addresses, the same host name with multiple IPs. Um, you can choose the interface that you want to serve DNS out on. Notice that there's a, a security descriptor, so there's access control entries on a DACL if it loads here. Okay, there we go. And so you can, you know, you, you have a fine level of control in terms of, you know, what you allow or what you make available to hosts and clients and, and people on the internet in terms of your DNS servers. Monitoring, we can perform tests for, you know, we can do a, an iterative simple query and a recursive query and event logging. Um, we can control all of these things here. Remember that you, you know, again, you don't want to get bogged down in too much logging unless you're troubleshooting because that can adversely affect the performance of your server if you're constantly logging lots and lots of things. That's lots of input and output and file access and it can just really slow things down. A quick review, remember that a forward lookup zone maps, uh, you know, it holds A records, which map a host name to an IP. A reverse lookup known holds po pointer records that maps an IP address to a host name. In addition, we also have SRV records. So here's pirates.arg, and here's our A record, Sarah. It maps the host name, Sarah, to the IP address 192.168.80.100. If we were to open it, let's go through here and look at some SRV record information. Here's an SRV record that tells everybody, hey, this is a global catalog server. Pirates, Sarah.pirates.arg is a global catalog server. It's just advertising a service. Um, it's a password server. It's a Kerberos server for replication and encryption. It's a lightweight directory access protocol server. And again, just mapping the fully qualified domain name. Remember, it starts at the more general on the right and then moves to the more specific towards the left. So in this case, the forest, the domain or tree, and then the host name, sarah.pirates.arg. Here's our you know, domain name. Here's our A record for our server. Now notice there's no A record right now for Vicky Von Vista, which is our, the, the name of our Vista uh, workstation client machine. There's just an A record for Sarah, our domain controller. Um, but when we, when we, when we complete a, the setup process for DHCP, um, we're going to set up dynamic update. And actually that Vista, Vicky Van Vista, the, our Vista host will be able to update um, the A record. So in this case, the A record will appear here in DNS. And again, just to review DNS, remember, um, now we have this set up to secure dynamic update only. And what this would do is this would not allow a host to update itself unless you know it had a computer account in Active Directory. We haven't joined Active Directory yet, so I'm going to turn that off temporarily. 
We'll turn it back on later. Remember the zones, um, Active Directory Integrated, is probably the least amount of hassle, um, although if you use this particular feature, you need to make sure that all your DNS servers are you know, Microsoft 2008 or 2003 or even 2000, but uh, not Linux. Linux uses a bind model. Linux can do dynamic update, but it can't do secure dynamic update. And also, if it's Active Directory Integrated, remember that um, it, it's not transferred in terms of increments or it doesn't do zone transfers by time. It's just handled as part of the app, um, part of the Active Directory replication process. Um, so you know it's automatic. Uh, it's encrypted by Kerberos. Some very powerful features there. But if you were to change the options, primary zone would be your writable zone if you went to a standard model. Secondary zone would be read-only zones that you could do zone transfers out to. The stub zone in this case just maps different name servers. We'll just leave it as Active Directory Integrated. Kind of go with the easiest there. Um, so just kind of a, a, a quick review there of DNS.